Good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris back again, and I'm going to continue talking about uh, measures of oxygenation. Let me just pull that out of the way here. And uh, we talked about uh, the uh, PaO2 um, in some videos that I posted earlier. And we also talked about uh, physiological or anatomical dead space. And what I'd like to do now is I'd actually like to talk about another concept known as the C little a. Okay, C little a, O, 2. Okay, so the first thing we need to know is um, whenever I have a little a, a little a in, in medicine always means in the arteries. Okay, so we're talking about something in the arteries. Um, if you were to see a capital A like so, that is talking about in the alveoli or the alveolus. Uh, typically, we just generalize that to alveoli. Okay, so, so big A is alveoli, little a is arteries. So what this is, is this is, C is content of arterial oxygen. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the actual content of oxygen that's in the blood. And when we talk about the content of oxygen in the blood, there are really two concepts that we need to take into consideration. And the first concept we need to take into consideration is what's bound to the hemoglobin, okay? So I'll just put H, B, G there, okay? So the amount of oxygen that I have bound to the hemoglobin in the red blood cells, plus I also can transport oxygen dissolved as a gas in the blood. So plus the dissolved uh, oxygen as a gas, okay? So I add the what I have bound to what I have dissolved, and that will give me a number. And that number is typically measured in what we call vol, V-O-L percent, volume percent or vol percent. And that simply equals milliliters of oxygen dissolved in 100 milliliters of blood, okay? Um, so if I have 100 milliliters of blood, how many milliliters of, of, of that uh, would be um, oxygen? And the normal vol percent is somewhere around 17 to 20 vol percent. Okay, that's approximately a, a good normal value. So 17 to 20 milliliters out of every 100 milliliters should have oxygen in it. Okay, so let's now talk about a little more about the formalism of calculating um, the CaO2. So let's talk first about this part here. What is dissolved in the hemoglobin? And that equation is going to look like this. CaO2 equals, okay? So first thing I need to do is I need to go to my labs and I need to look at the hemoglobin. What is my patient's hemoglobin? Okay, what is their hemoglobin? And their hemoglobin is generally going to be measured in grams per deciliter. Okay, so how many grams per 100 milliliters, deciliters 100 milliliters, how many grams per 100 milliliters of blood of hemoglobin do I have? So I need to know how much hemoglobin I have in my body. And then I need to multiply that by the, the saturation. How saturated is the hemoglobin? So um, I look on my arterial blood gas and I look for the SA, SAO2. SA -A is, is, is a, a in the arteries, so it's the saturation of arterial oxygen. The SAO2 is not to be confused with the SPO2. Okay, the SPO2 is pulse oximetry, and that is looking more at the capillaries. The SAO2 is looking at a sample drawn uh, directly from an artery. So there is a, a, a subtle difference between hemoglobin, uh, between SAO2 and SPO2. We use the SAO2. Um, and then I need to multiply that, all, all of that, by a coefficient. And that is, is basically my hemoglobin coefficient, and that is 1.34. Okay, that is 1.34. And basically what that, that coefficient does is that says that for um, every gram of, let's shut this thing up here real quick. All right. So for every gram of fully saturated hemoglobin, Every gram of fully saturated hemoglobin 
can carry up to 1.34 milliliters of oxygen. So this is a handy way of converting all of this. Okay, so that's why we need this coefficient. Okay, so hemoglobin times the SaO2, and the SaO2 um, needs to be in a fraction. So if my SaO2 is 95%, I need to go 0 0.95. Okay, I need to convert the percentage into a fraction uh, for this to work. Okay, times 1.34. Okay, and then whatever number I get here, um, I just throw that number down there, and then I need to add the amount of oxygen that I have dissolved. So I need to, to look on the ABG, and I need to look at my P little a, O2, okay? And I need to multiply that by yet another constant. And um, the constant that we typically use is 0 0.003. Um, what this tells us is every millimeter of mercury, of, of oxygen pressure that I have in the arteries, will mean that I have 0 0.003 milliliters of oxygen dissolved. So you can clearly see that dissolving oxygen hemoglobin is much more efficient, is a much more efficient way of um, dissolving uh, or of transporting oxygen versus uh, dissolved in the blood. And in fact, um, some people don't even take the PaO2 into consideration when calculating the CO2 simply because this number ends up being so small. Unfortunately, through your classes on respiratory therapy, um, you're going to have to add this in at least you know while you're in class, you know, simply uh, be because it is you know it does add a little bit more, and we want you to be as complete as possible. But oftentimes, in in, in the quote unquote real world, we won't necessarily deal with this unless we're dealing with some sort of hyperbaric conditions where my PaO twos are so incredibly large that they do start to. Um, Play, make uh, they do they do um, play considerably into into the total content of arterial oxygen arterial oxygen. Okay, so let's just work one through real quick to make sure we're good. So let's say that I have a patient that has a hemoglobin of fifteen grams per deciliter. Their PaO two is one hundred millimeters of mercury. Okay, millimeters, put another M in there, millimeters of mercury. Um, their saturation is 92% uh, and I think that's all we need right there. Okay, so all we do is we just plug and chug. So right here, I know that my hemoglobin is 15, so I'm going to plug 15 into here. My SAO, my SAO2 is 92%. I need to convert that to a fraction. So that's going to be 0 0.92 times 1.34. Remember that coefficient doesn't change. Okay. And then I need to add my PaO2 is 100. So 100 multiplied by 0. 0 0.003. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do the math real quick. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go 15 multiplied by 0 0.92 um, is going to give me 13.8. And then I'm going to multiply that by 1.34. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply by 1.34. That gives me. Uh, 18.5, uh, I'm just going to round, 18.5, it's like 492 and some change, I think, but 18.5, okay, and then I'm going to add, uh, let's see, 100 times 0 0.03, obviously that's going to be a very uh, small number, it's only going to be about 0 0.3, if I knock one, two zeros off of there, um, that'll give me 0 so 18.5 plus 0.3 is going to equal 18.5678. 18.8 vol percent will be that particular patient's CaO2. 
Um, so we've worked through it. It's a pretty s simple plug and chug uh, equation, but hopefully you guys um, found that um, pretty intuitive and fairly easy to calculate. As always, thanks for hanging in there.